So we had another clock come in the shop today. This one belongs to Chantel McGuire from Whitman County in Washington State. A real nice kitchen clock. It was given to Chantel McGuire as a wedding gift from her grandmother. And apparently it wasn't working when it was given to her. Chantel said that she's had it for 10 years and it's never worked. And her grandmother said it quit working when she had it. So it could possibly be 10, maybe 20 years since it's worked. A very nice Seth Thomas parlor clock. Also doubled as a kitchen clock. Let's look at the back side of the case. It does have a date on the back here. We'll get a little closer look. It's a little tough to read. This would have been the month right here. I believe that's an H. And this is a, a distinct one. And that's a little tough to read, but that would have been an 8. And you can clearly see that this was an 8, and that's a 9. Seth Thomas put the dates on the back of these, and the dates are on a code, and they're written backwards. This area here is the letter, which would have been the month, and I believe that to be an H. So the case would have been produced in August of 1889, be 1889. So I'm going to date this case at 1889. bottom of it does have some water staining, so it's had a little bit of water on it from time to time, it looks like. These square tops on the doors were typical of the 1880 clocks that Seth Thomas was putting out. And it's got the original glass on it. A very nice gold gilt on the glass. It's got the dragons on the bottom. Got the original latch on the side. The key is not original to the movement. And this would be the pendulum. Typical 1800s pendulum in good shape. A lot of these have been dented on the front and this one here is uh, next to perfect. Looks like there's another key in here. Same as that first one. There's a label in the bottom. It looks like it's pretty wore down and it's aged, patina aged, to the point where you can't read it anymore. That would have been the operating instructions down there. And a lot of these tags on the bottom have been, oh, when people wax them and, and clean them with cleaners and stuff, the paper on those tags would absorb the oil from the waxes and stuff from the polishes and then they turn dark and then you can't read them anymore. This has the, the alarm assembly in it. Very nice clock. Let's take it out of here and see why it's not working. Get this taper pin out of here. This dial's held in with three screws. And these were a paper dial. It's got the Seth Thomas logo. Gold gilt on that face there. A tin dial with zinc on the back. And then these are just uh, tabs that are bent over to hold this t tin part of it. This is a plywood. The wood is a little bit green tone to it. it. Might be like a poplar on the back side. Front side made out of walnut. The walnuts were real popular in the 1800s, the black walnuts. Four screws holding the movement in. We can take this out of here and get it on the bench and see what's keeping it from running. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get this alarm disconnected. The 
springs, both springs are wound up. I'm going to see if there's power on it, and there is. As far as markings on the movement, we've got an S. Thomas, Thomaston, Connecticut, USA. And then on the right side, you've got the Seth Thomas logo. And on this side here, five and seven eighths to one half. And what that implies is from the suspension spring mount to the suspension rod, that means the gearing in this clock is set up for that to be five and seven eighths to five and a half inches long. If they wanted to put this in a movement that has a longer pendulum on there, they would re-gear the escape wheel. They take the teeth and change the amount of number of teeth on it. We can check it for wear. This second wheel here has has a lot of wear on it. The third wheel looks like it has had a bushing in there. It, it looks like it's okay. Let's check this side here. This second wheel here looks like it has it's, it's had a bushing put in there but it's got some wear in it. The third wheel on the chime side. Third wheel on the gong side looks like there's considerable wear on it. The escape wheel looks good. I'm going to get the suspension spring out of here. I don't want to damage that. It has a nice gold gilt movement in it. These movements that were plated with gold don't tarnish like a bare brass movement. All in all, the movement Looks in pretty good shape. It'll need a couple bushings. It's quite dry as far as the oil. The oil has dried up in it. I would probably say it just stopped due to not having been cleaned and oiled. But we'll go ahead and take this apart and get it cleaned up and then move forward from there. First thing we'll need to do is let the springs down. Go to a larger clamp. And we hold the paw away from the ratchet wheel. That's the gong side. Now we'll do the time side. That paw is really hard to get on this one, but there we go. Okay, we've got the power released now. So first thing we need to do to dismantle this is get these springs loose here. The spring for the gong needs to be released. The alarm wheel will just lift right off of here. Just friction fit. Now the front plate should come off. It actually looks fairly clean. The escape wheel looks to be in real good shape. This is the second wheel. The pivot uh, almost looks like there's a, a little bit of rust on it. You can see it left some rust on my finger there. Yeah, there's a... Must have got into some moisture at one time. There's a little bit of rust on this pivot too. So after we clean them, we'll go ahead and polish them. And the third wheel looks good. It looks like there might be a little rust on the pivots on that one too. Probably a good thing to have uh, gotten to me when it did. This main spring here has a pin that is holding it in. Brass wire. This main spring gear has uh, really some hardened grease on it. 
you look right in this area here you can see some hardened oil in there so it's no wonder that this clock has uh, stopped working but I'll pull that mainspring out of there and clean it by hand to get all the old oil out of it gong mechanism this is the arm that controls the striking mechanism center wheel that looks in good shape governor that looks in good shape fourth wheel on the gong side that fourth wheel looks like it's in good shape more of the striking mechanism the third wheel on the striking mechanism it looks like they have run dry for quite a while I'll go ahead and polish those right here is the pivot and that should have a mirror finish to it but the blackishness that's on there you can tell it's been running dry and same for this side here it's it looks like the oil dried up and they ran it for a while afterwards the second wheel on the strike side doesn't look too bad a little bit of rust on the shaft the main springs look real dry so we'll go ahead and clean this up and do some further inspection and if it needs a few bushings we'll go ahead and install new bushings we'll get it back into running shape this has had some bushings installed here one over here and one over here they don't look like they were installed flush with the plate the surface of the bushing here should be flush with this plate here and it's it's set in a little too far same with this bushing here you can see as I run my tweezer on the surface of the bushing it runs into the plate and stops what that does is it gives too much because uh, it gives too much end shake on the gear when it's back in there so while this is out I'll go ahead and correct that I can push the bushing in a little farther so it's flush with that plate the way it's supposed to be this is the alarm mechanism if you look at it real close you see a lot of dirt and grime on it So this is due to be clean, a lot of hard oil on it. So we get that pulled apart, cleaned up also. So I've got the movement all cleaned up and I'm just doing an inspection on the pivot holes. Have all the pivots polished. The second wheel here needs a bushing. You can see there's a lot of movement when I apply pressure to the gears. And I've marked the side with a felt pin. This, this side here is the worn side. So I'll take these gears out of here and fit a bushing in there and then move on to the next. So I've got the bushing fitted for the second wheel. I just need to press it, press it in. So we've got the bushing installed for the second wheel. And we're just doing a fit check here. After each bushing, we need to assemble it, see how it see how it fits. And that's what we're looking for. 
nice and snug in there. We'll look at the other side. This side has a bushing in there, previously one, but I'm going to go ahead and put another one in there to snug it up. Okay, I'll continue to do that for each pivot hole until it's completely rebuilt. So I've got the movement all cleaned up, time to reassemble. Pivots have been all polished. Bushings all replaced. So we've got it all assembled, it's time to release the mainsprings now. We'll get the suspension spring in there. So it's time to oil it now. Gets just a small amount on it, on the receiving pallet. and on the exit pallet. I've got the movement all oiled and lubed up. It's time to mount it on the test board and see how it runs. So it's time to oil the alarm assembly. The main spring on this gets a little thicker oil. It's been up on the test board for a week now and it's been working non-stop. It's time to pull it off the test board and to mount it inside the case. So this Seth Thomas has uh, Geneva stops on the mainsprings. They were a system that was developed sometime in the 17th or 18th century. And your high quality clocks had them installed on them. And it's a system that prevents the clock from being wound completely tight. 
The theory was that if you wound your clock up completely tight that the spring would have a higher tension at the top of the wind and for a, a day or two it would run faster than during the middle of the uh, wind of the mainspring. And that's these gears right here. And to set these up you need to pull these off and then wind it up fully. And different people have different amounts of the wind down on it but on how far to release that but I've been releasing them about one full turn some people go a half a turn some people go two turns as far as what they came out of the factory from I have no idea of knowing so now now that it's wound full I'll release this let it go down one full turn I'll release the click and let it wind down one full turn one one full revolution probably hard to see but I let that wind down one full revolution and then you need to set this uh, this gear here and you'll see that this gear here so the shallow part of this gear here needs to be set so that the so that this large tooth on this one will inter interfere when they come together so we need to go up with this that'd be right at that point there so when this winds this large tooth here is going to run into this area here and it's going to stop it from being wound which is right at that point there. So now these two are jammed with each other and that mainspring won't wind any further. And to set this side up here, pull that off, wind it full, and then release it one full turn. Okay, that's one full turn. And then we need to drop this gear in here so that it will jam on this side. And there's the short side, and here's the long. So that needs to be placed in here so that uh, they will mesh against each other when you wind it. And right now they are, they're jammed into each other so now that's how I set up these Geneva gears another name is they call it a Geneva stop system it was a system that they put in more expensive clocks and it was a way to assure that the clocks kept better time I've seen a lot of these clocks that the uh, Geneva stops have been removed on either the owner wanted to get a longer run time out of them or someone who was repairing it didn't know how to set them up and were confused by them so they just would remove them so the movement's been keeping excellent time for a week now so I'm going to install it in the case here get it ready to go back to Chantel and hopefully she'll get it home and be able to enjoy it get this alarm mechanism in here it'd be easier to pull this bell out of here first This is the mechanism that uh, controls the alarm, turns the alarm on and off. And this is the alarm wheel that you use to set the alarm with. I didn't, uh, I didn't clean this. I thought I'd let the owner uh, clean that. Some owners like the patina on there. Okay, we'll put the hands on it. I'm going to run it without the dial for a couple days and we'll just see how it runs out and then after I'm comfortable with it I'll put the dial on there and so the clock has been working real good now been in the case for for three days now and it's working just fine so it's time to put the dial on it I'll get a little close up here before I put the dial on it It's running excellent. Time to put the face back on it. So 
So over the week period I've had it run continuously, extremely accurate. It's a very nice clock. This is the alarm wheel. To set the alarm, you turn the alarm dial here until the hour you want the alarm to go off matches up in line with the hour hand. And then of course the alarm, you wind the alarm up this way here. definitely a loud alarm and the gong on it It's an 1889 Seth Thomas.